Hello and welcome once again to Two Girls in a Pod. I'm Sharon. I'm Christy. Welcome everybody and hope that everybody is having a great day. Hope people enjoyed their long weekend. We were thinking, as we always do, if y'all haven't noticed, we're thinkers. (laughs) But, you know, one of the things we want to do is kind of continue on with our conversation of last week. But, you know, last week we addressed anxiety around changes and stuff. And this week it's kind of going to tie into that in a little bit. But what we really wanted to talk about was why people feel the need to be right. Why people feel the need to share opinions. One of the things is, is that I'm sure a lot of you out there obviously have some kind of social media accounts and stuff. And, you know, every once in a while people post stuff, I might go, I'll say, well, you know, you know, I'll look at comments and stuff. And, And sometimes I'm really just taken aback by some of the comments that people will put out there. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of times on different topics, I will go and look at some of the comments and stuff, but I realized that there are a lot of negative connotation to a lot of the comments that you see on social media and that. So sometimes I just have to steer clear of it because you know, sometimes the subject itself is already can be an overwhelming or, you know, something daunting. But then you go and you look at the comments. And a lot of times I walk away feeling pretty disappointed in people. (laughs) Well, not only disappointed, but it's like, I just don't understand because sometimes it becomes into these personal attacks. And sometimes it's people you don't even know. And you know, you're sitting there, you're name calling, you're and I'm just there like it. I really it blows my mind. Because I think to myself, why would somebody engage with somebody they don't know? Why is it that they have to share that opinion if somebody has a differing opinion or whatever it is? And why we have lost the ability to do that in a constructive way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying all of them, because say if there's 100 comments, there might be 10 of them that are that negative and then the, the other 90 are just whatever. But it's that negativity you know, and you're right. It's it. You kind of get to the place where you don't want to read. Sometimes you don't want to even read the comments on your own post because you never know. Mm-hmm. You know, you might be thinking you're posting something, you know, uplifting or whatever. What there's no. You may be posting something also that that resonates with you for maybe different reasons. So you post it, and then of course it's open for interpretation. You know, and then people come back and are are making comments, and you're thinking, "Whoa, didn't think that at all." So. Right. Yeah. Well, I, and I, that's the thing. It seems like so many people respond as though, I mean, they're really taking some things personally and they respond with such an emotional charge to it. And it just, sometimes it turns out really ugly. (laughs) Well, exactly. And I guess one of the things is, is always ask people to take that moment and ask yourself, why is this driving such a strong emotion in me? What is that about? Because oftentimes people aren't even really responding to that. They're responding to something that's more internal to them. And, but they're putting it out there. And also, I think it's easier to do because when you're responding on a social media, there's no face to those, you know, I mean, because you don't know, they have these little avatars and all sorts of stuff, you know, where, so sometimes it's not even a face that you're seeing. It's a dog, their cat, whatever. But There's no face. So we've lost that personal connectedness, I think, with people. Yeah, they're not seeing the person that this affects. And so it seems like it is easier for them to address it in a way that is really can be seem attacking at times. And that it seems like it's taken away the humanity because they can't see these people's faces and and the things that are happening that have impacted them. Well, absolutely. And I think the other thing is, too, is I don't know if these people, if people who are doing this sometimes are feeling really put out in their own life, maybe that people aren't listening, maybe they're having, maybe there's that strong emotion to what's going on in their life, personal life, business life, whatever. And then it's like that becomes a forum or a place for them to vent. And I don't know if they don't even realize that's happening I don't know if people just say, you know, oh, this is a great place I can go. Because I don't understand that. You know, I mean, we have celebrities, we have sports figures, we have, in my head, I'm thinking, what is what somebody's wearing or doing with somebody else? What does that really have to do with me? What does it really have to do with you as an individual? It doesn't. Their I mean, lives really don't impact us on the daily. 
Yeah. And you can have an opinion about it, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it's not relevant to you in that way. So why someone would feel the need to get on there and be so emotionally charged. Right. I don't understand that either. And I get it. You know, we talked last week. There's a lot of emotion right now with a lot of the different stuff going on in the United States. And I get that because some of that stuff impacts people on a very personal level. So I understand why people would have more of an emotional reaction to some of those things. Well, especially if it, you know, isn't a direct impact. I understand that too. But I do think that especially nowadays, you see that it's like important for people to be right. They are so anxious to tell someone else they're wrong in their belief or their stance on anything. I mean, it seems like that that is a huge deal for people now. Well, and I think it is, but I think it starts with kids. Because, you know, when I work with kids and, you know, sometimes they'll just dig their little heels in, man, about something. And I'll say, why is it important? And oftentimes it's because they never get to be right. So they're always fighting to be right. But they are right from their little child perspective because that's all they know. Mm -hmm. You know, and as adults, we're looking at the bigger global pictures of some things. And sometimes you can't when you do that with children. They don't get it because in their little world, they're right because that's their little world. So I don't know. Does it start there that even as children, we teach children that they're not right. Adults are always right. All those kind of things. And in doing so, do we set the stage for this now so that people feel like even as they get older and stuff, that somehow what they did as a child, you know, that thing of wanting to be right, never being right. Is that somehow playing out? I don't know. But I do know that oftentimes when, and sometimes we'll do it, (laughs) you know, it's like we could be arguing a point and sometimes we're arguing the same point, but we want the other person to hear it through our words or whatever. I don't even know what that whole thing is about. It happens all the time. I think in relationships, you, how many times have you said about people that you work with and they're arguing about something and you help them to realize that they're really actually arguing the same point, but they become so emotional. And it's like, they want to be right. And I'm there like, you know, you're both right. Well, how can that be? Because you're right. Because if it's what I'm feeling, if it's my belief, it's whatever, then it is truly mine. So I can be right about that. And I can be, I can state what my belief is or whatever. And the other person, they're right too, because they're right based on what they believe and what their knowledge is or whatever. But we have gotten to this place like, and I always tell my clients too, you know, so I want to be clear on this is always tell them. I truly, truly, truly believe that there's more good in the world than bad. I truly believe that people, and I talk when we're talking about other countries and stuff and where there's war or whatever, and I always remind them that the citizens of those countries, they just want to live their life just like us. They want to go to work, raise their kids, go vacation, do all the same things. It's always a handful of people who create our dissension. When you sit there and think, you know, for the longest time, if we take even Roe versus Wade, it's been there and people have just said, okay, it's there. And then, you know, out of the blue, this becomes a topic. So therefore it kind of upsets the apple cart. Mm -hmm. And now we've got all of this going on with this. And then what does that lead to? And then it creates that anxiety we talked about last week of, oh my God, if it's this, then what if it's this? And what if it's this? So people then go to that place of thinking, oh my God, if it starts with one thing, it's going to become so much more. Everything's going to kind of fall apart or everything. That's what we're talking about is the anxiety comes with what we see around us. How do we get rid of the anxiety? Sometimes I think the anxiety still also manifests with that thing of digging your heels in of and wanting to be right, wanting something to make sense to you. So it's like, no, this is right. This is right. Because if you feel like there's that sense of chaos, mm-hmm. so that could be an important uh, part in it as well. But one person trying to yell louder than the other is not an answer. And I feel like that that's what it becomes with some of the comments and stuff that people make nowadays. Like I said, it's, it's so emotionally charged. And I do think that it has to do with just wanting to be right. And just because you voice it louder or do it in a way that you is, makes you feel powerful by cutting someone else down. That's not the way to handle it. Well, and I'll often see that, you know, in my office or when families are talking to me about 
the kids yelling, the parent yells, they're trying to out yell each other. And I'm always thinking, thinking, what is the point of this? <laughs> now we have a yelling contest and, and I'll say, okay, pause. And they'll pause and I'll say, now, what are we talking about here? And they're both mad now, so they don't even know. Yeah, they're so identified with the emotion that you can't even resolve the issue. Absolutely. And I think sometimes in order to grow, I think in order to grow, we have to be strong enough in our belief system and our faith and in whatever that is, that we are not afraid of listening to another idea, of listening to an opposition to it. Because through that, we get education. And then it's not about being right. It's about learning. Well, another thing along those lines that I've learned is that not everything deserves a reaction. Absolutely. You can put space between you and some things that even make it as simple as thinking about going through, you know, scrolling through your Facebook or whatever it is that you have and thinking that you don't have to go down through there doing a reaction to every single post you see. It's basically the same thing regarding everything in daily life. Not everything deserves your reaction or your attention on it. Mm -hmm. But then the question becomes, why do people feel the need to do that? Mm -hmm. It's once again, I think a lot of times people want to be heard, whether they feel like they've been silenced or whatever. I think that might be a big component to it as well Is you know, I want to be heard. My opinion is valuable, mm -hmm. but I always say your opinion is valuable, but as soon as the name calling in that starts, your opinion now means nothing because now you've lost all credibility. Now it becomes this tit for tat name calling and stuff like that. And there are people who are entertained by that. But through doing that, you do lose your power. Oh, absolutely. 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 And I think that's the whole thing is. I guess in this episode, trying to maybe figure out why some stuff happens the way it does or why people, but the why doesn't change how we respond and how we react because one why begets another why and begets another why. We call that grave digging in therapy. Finding out the why just means, why, well, why did that happen? Why did that happen? I think the thing becomes more relevant of how is my reactions to these things benefiting me? What is the positive thing I get to walk away from with it? If we're name calling and stuff and you walk away with a positive feeling about that, then you have to question why would that give me a positive reaction or why would I perceive it as positive? Mm -hmm. Because we should not feel positive in belittling or name calling another individual. And we get into these debates about a lot of different things. And when we call it a debate, that's a sharing of ideas. That means the other person has an opinion too, and they can voice theirs as well. Mm -hmm. But we feel we're at this place in our society, it feels like that people are constantly trying to sway the person to their side of thinking, sway everybody, get more people on this side or that side. Or once again, even like in the last episode, at the end of the day, we should all be siding with humans, mm -hmm. our humanity, all of those things. I also want to emphasize that a majority of people, the majority of people are not what we're talking about. But unfortunately, what happens is when you have these adults, we're going to talk about adult accountability here. When you have these adults who are very strong in their opinion and, and bashing people and whatever, that gives permission sometimes to our younger people, our kids. So we talk about, well, why are kids talking this way to their peers or to their teachers or to this or to that? As adults, we have to look at ourselves and our behaviors as well. It's once again, that thing of being right. And if it means I have to call you a name to be right, then I'm going to call you a name to be right. I think that it has come down to that a lot of times for people. And the thing is, even if you don't even have children, you can be a role model through action whether it be to children or to other people, it's you taking care of you and the way that you respond to those things and really dissect and look at why you have the opinion, opinion you do about something. You really need to be able to, to do that critical thinking and be able to look at it from all sides. And if you're just constantly voicing your opinion over everybody else, you can't hear that. Well, and I think the other thing is, is that we have to have the capacity to think outside of ourselves. 
Sometimes when you're talking about certain topics or things like that, and you're in a crowd, being aware of the fact that your opinion may trigger somebody else's, because we all have a story. And sometimes just because a story is not shared doesn't mean it didn't happen and exist. So, you know, whether it's talking about these topics like abortion or rights for the disenfranchised or whatever that is, being careful and being aware, because sometimes people, whether they're talking about racism or something, you don't know if the person you're talking to has had an experience with that, that is very emotional for them. And it doesn't mean be Pollyanna, have your opinions, but it's how do we present them? Mm -hmm. How do we do it in a constructive way? And once again, how do we learn that not everything needs a response? Sometimes when somebody's talking to you, they're just talking about their thing. It, it, and sometimes it's not about putting our two cents in. Well, you know, if you just did this, I can't tell you how much time in couples counseling, I will have that. The wife comes home. She's complaining about the boss, the husband. Well, you just do this, this, and this. And, you, and she's looking at him and just getting madder and madder. She never once asked for his opinion. She was just simply stating things. But when we don't actively listen, we miss really important things. As you can tell, Christina are big proponents of active listening. To actively listen, listen means to stop talking and it means to stop thinking about your response. Yeah. And everybody out there, y'all know what I'm talking about because we have all done it. Mm -hmm. Every single human being has done it. Yeah. You're usually already formulating your response before the person's even done talking. So you can't hear what they're truly saying. Exactly. Because whatever they start with has somehow triggered something. Emotions. Mm -hmm. And emotions can run away with you. Obviously, that's I think that's what we're seeing a lot of times. And, and I get it because there is a lot of stuff going on. It's creating a bunch of turmoil in people. But the reason the emotions run away with us is because we continue to think the thought that is promoting the emotion. And it's so feeding that. Listen. Our thought continues to feed and promote the emotion that we're having. We change the thought process. We stop, pause, and just listen, and that will change that thought process. But when we have that thought process followed by the emotion, then followed by the name calling or by by that thing of digging our heels in to be right and pushing and pushing, then we have continue to feed that, that thought process. Mm -hmm. So it's how do we change the thought process? How do we stop and say, why is this so relevant for me? Cause I'm telling you, sometimes that just, it does freak me out and I'll, and I'll talk. I don't understand why somebody has such a strong feeling about this. If a celebrity goes and buys a $50 million boat, whatever. And people, they're like, well, who, well, why are you doing that? You could be feeding three countries or blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking in my head, It's their money. They can go with your money. Nobody goes and tells you how to spend your money. Mm -hmm. Whether you make 30,000 a year or 300 million a year, you wouldn't like it if somebody sitting there saying, well, you know, with that 30,000, you really should be buying, you know, more chicken nuggets instead of steaks for your kids or whatever. It doesn't matter. The thing is, is that we are so busy putting our opinions into other people's lives that we're taking away time from our own life of, of, of getting us to where we want to be. When we put that much thought into other people's lives, we're not putting thought into our own. Mm-hmm. And that can be a deflection too, because maybe some people think, you know, I have a crappy life. I'm going to go vicariously through somebody else or whatever. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But it doesn't have to be that way. Why we care about what somebody's spending, who they're loving, where they're vacationing, in a negative way. I don't get it. Now, if you're looking at somebody's vacation photos, we were looking at Sylvia. She was, her family was on a great vacation and uh, we were looking at the photos and then they're like, oh my gosh, Christy, I I, I really want to do a vacation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's a positive thing. But if I sat there and said, geez, well, how can she afford that? And must be nice. (laughs) Yeah, must be nice. Or then it's like, no, we support her. She is our friend. We love when she gets to go places. We love when any of our friends get to go places. Yeah. I looked at those pictures and I was so happy for her that her and her family got to have that experience. And it looked like they were on a great adventure. 
And that's what it should be. It should, you know, because when you, you do that thing of wonder how they can do this or take the time to do that, it just takes away from you. I think sometimes there's jealousy and envy and all that that comes in. But instead, it's like, oh, wow, what are those places? Are those somewhere we want to go? Shifting that to how do I make that experience? So it can be, it's in anything. It's from something as simple as somebody going on a vacation or what they spend their money on to these really intense things that are going on in our society right now. We can't sit there and turn a blind eye to it because in some ways, decisions by the Supreme Court, because the Supreme Court, that's about laws and stuff and laws affect people. Yeah, the, plain yeah, and simple. Those things impact our society, and I understand that. But not everything, like you say, deserves your attention. You know, and maybe you just take one piece of maybe something that's been a distraction and you say, hey, that's not important. I can get rid of that. I know one thing that I've done, I it's rare that I look at anything that's like celebrity news or that. They can voice opinions about things that are happening on a political level or stuff like that. And that might be the thing that I hear, you know, or something like that, but where it comes to their lives and stuff like that, for me, that was something I could just negate. I don't, you know, I'm not about reading what, who they're with this week. (laughs) You know, what I found very fascinating is, you know, as we listen to this, uh, you know, when, when we look at the political climate, how many times I will hear people say, well, who do they think they are? Why are they talking about this political stuff? And we're talking about celebrities and this and that. And I'm thinking, they're a celebrity, but they're still a United States citizen. Yeah. The last time I checked, they live in this. And this is this is the thing that we somehow feel like, um, well, their opinion is not valuable. Everybody's opinion is valuable to them, and their opinion is valuable to somebody. But that's what I mean. We get into this thing of who can give an opinion and who can't give an opinion, whose opinion is more relevant than the other, who has, you know, more experience in this or that. Opinions are not about experience. They're only about your experience. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody sits there and says, I don't like this in my practice, I, and, and just reading stuff, you know, people, a lot of women said that, you know, about the 4th of July, I'm kind of boycotting it because they're kind of upset about the ruling. When my clients sit there, say something like that, it's not my job to sit there and say, well, that's not what the 4th of July is about and blah, blah, blah. You know what? You just respect where they're at. It's not about that. It's about their feeling and their belief. You just validate that. I'm sorry you feel that way. That must be hard for you, whatever that is, if you're feeling, you know, because once again, they all have their stories. And when we respect the fact that everybody has a history, everybody has And that history is what brought you to the day. And sometimes those, once again, when they're talking about those topics and stuff, I remember being in a class one day in in college and and we were talking about sexual assault and they were there. Well, one in four females is sexually abused or something to that effect. I remember somebody in class made a comment, well, that seems like a really high, or, or something like that. I don't know if they were being a smart line. I don't know what it was, you know, what the context was, because I wasn't paying that much attention. But I remember later going out and we had like an area we could sit in. I was sitting there and one of the females in, that was in the class was sitting there with me. And she was really quiet. And I kind of said, I said, are you okay? And she goes, I just was bothered by that. And I says, well, why were you bothered by it? Well, she had been raped. And it had only been like two years ago, two years prior to that. So it was still, she goes, it still feels a little bit raw when people say certain things. And, and I was like, oh my God, yeah, you don't think about that. But it wasn't what the professor was saying about it, the statistics of it. It was the the student in class who made the comment and it happened to be a male student. And a lot of people will do that. They don't really give thought to who else is there and listening and what their experience has been, they just make some flippant comment and, you know, move on. Well, and that stands out in my mind because it was just giving us data. Right. So there was no need to interject anything at that point because it was just giving us information. But his need to make a comment was there was no need for what was the purpose of it. And granted, he maybe didn't know that it would impact. But, you know, if you use a statistics like that, a stat like that, and say you have 30 females in the classroom, then that's going to tell you something. 
Just saying. <laughs> exactly. There's a good likelihood somebody's experienced something in there that, you know, your comment may be harmful. And so I think those are things, those are just random examples from my life. So I'm sure if you guys sit back, you can sit there and think of those random examples in your life too. Maybe arguments over things that with people, some strangers, sometimes maybe colleagues or whatever, and you're there thinking, and now you look back and say, oh my goodness, why am I doing this? Or why was it important? Hopefully we're evolving. And when we're doing this podcast and we're sharing these things, we're hoping that something resonates with you and and you say, oh my God, you know what? That might be something I can implement because maybe this is somewhere I struggle or, you know, maybe I do want to be able to take a, a lot of the emotion out and still be able to present my argument, so to speak, or debate this issue without the emotion because as soon as the emotion starts, the debate ends. The conversation shifts very dramatically. Well, as you mentioned, you lose credibility when you do that. Absolutely. And to not be disrespectful, even if it's not your belief. Sometimes kids in their youth will say things. And I remember one day we were talking and your brother's with us and he says something and it was faith-based and and you could tell it really bothered your mom a little bit. And, And we said to him, you know, it's okay to have your opinion but not at the expense of degrading somebody else or or being mean to somebody. Right. I always love this one too. This is one that I always love. Well, I'm sorry if people just can't handle the truth. Do you know how many times I hear that in my office when I'm doing family work or that? Well, I don't know. They just can't handle the truth. And my thing would be, could you please uh, let me know how you presented that truth? Well, I just told them straight up. Okay, but what does that mean to tell somebody straight up? And then when they repeat them, they're like, whoa, now I see the problem here. And I remind people, you're presenting your truth. It's how you see it. That's your perception. Yes. And people say, well, there's only one truth. We know that's not true. (laughs) (laughs) If there was only one truth, we wouldn't have changes in laws. We wouldn't have changes in this. No, Truth, everything morphs with society. Society determines what is, you know, even if we do the right and the wrongs or the what's the law and what's not the law and all this and that other stuff, it's as people move, change, and all of that, society. So paying attention to that and understanding when you are speaking, if you want, you can start with, this is my truth. This is how I see the truth. Then that's yours. Take ownership of it. Run with it. Be proud of it. (laughs) But your truth is not everybody's truth. And people will say, well, there's one way and only one way to believe. And how does that even make sense? If it was one belief system, everybody would be Christian, everybody would be Muslim, everybody would be Buddhist, Hindu, whatever, Wiccan. It doesn't matter. But we're not because each person is looking and navigating their life to the best of their ability even in their spiritual way and their emotional. It's all through their own scope and, and their own experiences and things like that. And it's like you mentioned, there are laws that change throughout time. It you know was accepted widely at one point about marriage at a very young age. My aunt on my mom's side, she was 13 when she was married. And that was very widely accepted. And that was their truth. It was okay to do that. Now we don't see that so much. (laughs) Now, if you see some man going to marry a 13-year-old girl, everybody's up in arms. But it wasn't that long in our history that that was an acceptable thing. So, you know, people sit there and say, well, they might even said to your aunt, well, that was wrong. But they stayed married. They stayed married for, yeah. Until he passed away. Until he passed, yes. So once again, that's what I mean. Those things change and it's like we'll make, and maybe they're meant to because it is about an evolution. We should be evolving Mm -hmm. a human race. We should be evolving. But I know that sometimes it feels like we're paused in our evolution. Sometimes people feel like we've taken steps back in our evolution. I mean, depends on who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And when those truths become about oppressing someone else or a certain group or that, That's when I have issue about those kinds of things. But like we said, not becoming so identified with the emotion that you can't have a decent conversation with someone. And I think that's what it is. In that case, you're talking about oppression. And and for some, 
people, for a lot of people, the overturning of Roe versus Wade feels like oppression to a lot of women. And therefore, it's going to create strong feelings. But it's not just women who are feeling that that is an oppressive thing to women. There are a lot of men who are just as outraged mm-hmm. about the whole thing. Maybe they, because they're married and they have kids, or maybe they're just more socially aware or whatever. I don't know. It depends. You know, for everybody, it's a different thing. But you're right. Some things are going to trigger us more than others. I, my passion is mental illness. And when I see, once again, you know, we have these shootings and I'm sure one of my clients today will tell me if they want to make it about mental illness. I have found in the time that I have done this job, 20 plus years, that I have met some of the most amazing people, amazing people who really are about humanity. They just can't see themselves fitting in it. But the capacity that they have for other life. And so it is very upsetting to them. And I do have a strong opinion about that, but it's not one I'm going to rant and rave about. I would rather educate, helping to educate people, helping people to understand that mentally ill people are not the ones who normally go out and hurt other people. That's not their forte. But there's definitely a stigma around that because a lot of times that's the first place that people go to. They put it as a mental illness. So, I mean, you you think that a lot of people that have mental illness think, you know, I'm I don't fit into that category. I'm not that person. (laughs) I wouldn't hurt anybody. So why are we acting this way? When we look at some of these things and we we go and we look at what is the driving force, sometimes it is political or religious beliefs. That may drive these when we look at a lot of this, you know, and I'm talking worldwide, but yeah, it's, and so for, that's a strong area for me, but I'm not going to get in. I don't want my emotion to come out because my emotion is not what's relevant. The education of how mental illness really fits in this picture. That is important. Racism. I happen to be a Latino female, been there, done that. So I, do I have a stronger opinion about that? Absolutely. Am I going to rant and rave about it? No, because nobody's going to listen. If we want to be taken seriously about the opinions that we have, we have to think them through and be able to present them in that fashion. But we're not doing that right now. And I feel it. And you you can feel it. You can hear it. That emotion is running deep right now. And being respectful of it. And whether you agree or disagree with somebody, being respectful of that emotion that is driving them because it is relevant and important to them. Why somebody can have a strong of emotion about somebody who goes and spends $50 million on a boat, I don't get it. Unless, of course, if you live in poverty. So there may be a reason for that. Or maybe you had $300 million and now you live in poverty. I don't know. Once again, I don't know everybody's story. But what I do know what I can do is I can sit and listen to a story. I can learn. I can actively listen. And I think we do that because, you know, like we told you the last time we have our friends are all over the place as far as what their beliefs are, whatever. It does not end our friendships. Mm -hmm. I think that you have to focus on what you can do, because like you say, we don't agree with everybody all of the time and that's okay. So What you can do is look at the action that you can take and being supportive of the ideas that resonate with you, whether it be, you know, you're supportive of women in business and those kinds of things, you can really support those things. And by putting action into those things, you're not adding fuel to the fire with all the arguing and and all this other stuff that's happening. You know, I think it's a really good example is my client, his daughter, She's a young uh, female, and I really like because when he talks about her, she's very strong. She wants to learn. I mean, she wants to be active. And so I asked him, I said, how is she doing with this whole situation? And he goes, well, you know, he said she came to her mom and I and asked if they were going to have like a little protest. And she asked if she could participate. And he said, so, but they, they had a conversation about it. And he says, well, you know, who's all going 
she mentioned everybody that was going to go to this protest and they said, okay. He says, but you know, if things start to get heated, he goes, remove yourself from that. He said, don't, don't be in the middle of that. Remove yourself. Safety first. <laughs> Safety. But mm -hmm. I don't have to run into a burning building. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If there's a hose there that I could use to put it out, put out, use the hose. Don't run into the burning. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, and so he was basically telling her, you know, supporting her in her belief, why she believes the way she does. She talked with them about it. And as a parent, they supported it. They said, sure, if you can do it. And of course, making sure there was no violence and anything like that. Think how empowering that was for her. Right. That you as my parents listen to me. And this is important to me. And it is important to her because she's a young female. And he understood that. And he was in support of it. And then come to find out, they were the only parent who said yes, which kind of blew him away a little bit. But the thing is, is that he allowed her, her voice, they allowed her to do something active. Letting people know that you can, if it's protest, you can protest without the violence. You have the ability to write your congressmen and senators and your elected officials. It's all public record. Go get the addresses. Email them, do whatever you want. In a, you can be active in that way. There are things to do to help with that emotion that will make you feel like you're doing an action. Whereas if I'm just yelling and screaming, yeah, I'm doing an action, but there's no productivity to it. So that's why you scream and you yell more and more and you get more and more frustrated because nothing is changing or you feel like nothing is changing. Mm -hmm. But the only way to have that change and to deal with that emotion, I feel, is what can I truly do? What is an action? Yelling and screaming and, and, and all of that, you feel tired. Right. But then you sit down and you ask yourself, what did I accomplish? What's different? No, there's definitely ways to contribute in a positive way that you can feel empowered. And to me, that was such an amazing example of that empowerment of how they help to empower their child to know that her feeling mattered. That her voice mattered. Her voice mattered because she talked from the perspective of a young female with something that has the potential to impact her. Because she, once again, we don't know what continues to happen. That's that uncertainty that's going on right now for a lot of people. It's this, but what's next? What's next? What's next? If this doesn't impact me, will the next ruling impact me? Will the next this impact me? But we can't sit on the fence on everything. Right. It's okay to have your opinion. It's okay to have your passion. What I don't feel is okay is when we will be hurtful and harmful to other people in order to try to be heard. And I often wonder if it's that whole thing of people just wanting their 15 seconds of fame. Yeah, sometimes I think it is that. You know, that 15 seconds of, oh, here I am, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I do know that we have this amazing thing called the brain. I do know that we have the capacity to listen to others. I do know and truly believe that there's more good than bad in the world. That a majority of people just want to live their life. They want to be happy. They want to be able to do the things that bring them joy, their family. There will always be somebody who is going to have a negative thing even about that for whatever reason, but we don't have to buy into the negativity. And I think that's the biggest thing for me is how do we stop buying into the negativity? How do we stop getting that emotional charge? And I think sometimes too, we live in a society that thrives on drama. Yes, definitely. But drama drain is very, very draining. Well, I think a lot of times nowadays, it seems like a lot of people are trying to live vicariously through others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, I think that's where a lot of that comes from. Which is kind of sad because if you put as much energy in that you're putting into living through others vicariously, if you put that energy back into yourself, just how much better your life would be. Right. I guess the thing is, is 
have your opinion, share your opinion, share why it's important to you. Do it in a constructive way. But that also means to actively listen, listen to other people, whether you agree or disagree. And sometimes you simply say, let's agree to disagree. Yeah. But it's not about who has to be right and who is wrong because your opinion is your own. Mine is mine. Christie's is Christie's. It doesn't matter. It's not about being right. And it shouldn't be about being right. It should be about being heard. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is more. It's I think that people, when they don't feel they are being heard, will go to that place. But if we take the time to listen and kind of just to care about each other in a way, and it's not Pollyanna stuff. It's not, you know, sunshine and rainbows and all that crap all the time. No, but sometimes it's about minding your own business, which then makes it easier on other people. Definitely. You have to have compassion for people. Yes. So be kind to yourself, but be kind to others. Find those people you want to share your story with that it's relevant, but also be willing to listen to everybody. We all have a story. And oftentimes many people go through life and they don't ever get to share that story. So be that active listener. Take that time. It's really not that hard. So hopefully something resonates with our listeners. And as always, we are so grateful. Our gratitude statement, of course, is that we're so grateful that you do take the time to listen to us. And we're very just immensely grateful for that. We hope that you guys have a wonderful week. We hope that you practice your active listening and, and, but also sharing of your story in those constructive ways, because it does matter. And we will be back next week and Mm -hmm. be kind to one another. (laughs) Absolutely. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.